It's been, it's been a few times, man. <laughs> but look, look, I you you well, can't deny it, and you will deny it. Yeah, man. I mean, it just is what it is, man. About the shooting on Mallory Road and what may have led up to it. We're learning more about the shooting on Mallory Road and what may have led up to it. Tonight, the victim's loved ones talking only with Fox 5's Rob Urienzo. A five-year-old boy is now left to grow up without his dad after the shooting. Family members tell me that investigators think the reason was road rage. He truly is repeating that his dad is gone forever. 47-year-old Richard Antoine used to do everything with his son, Richard Jr., that all changed the morning of February 21st on Mallory Road off of Flat Shoals in South Fulton. We don't understand how someone so good was taken so so quickly from us. Police think these two guys, 27. I mean, did anybody not think it was going to be them? Hit one if you, when you, when this story started and you heard about road rage and you saw that black guy, you know, look like a, you know, fuck good father. You heard that he got killed. Who else kills that guy? That guy could live to be a thousand years old if it was if if he didn't live in Blackiston. But that goes back to the scenario again, too. You see a black man dead, you ninety percent of times you gotta assume that you know another black man did it. Well, this wasn't like a, a situation where it's like hood beef. This is a red. They told you it was a red guy was riding down the street and it was a road rage. It's, that could have been anybody. That could have been a white guy. Who could have been a, a Umbrio could have been an Eskimo. But who here didn't who here thought for half a second that it wasn't gonna look like this? That the suspect was gonna look like this. Stone Mallory Road off of Flat Shoals in South Fulton. We don't understand how someone so good was taken so so quickly from us. Police think these two guys, 27-year-old Antonio Spear and 23-year-old McKinley Johnson got mad at Antoine behind the wheel as he was driving to work. So investigators say they got out and shot him. 10 o'clock in the morning, how are you that angry? Then from- Beefing with breakfast, man. But the police said like they barricaded the, his car. He couldn't go left, he couldn't go right. Richard's sister- They blocked him in. They got mad at him, so they blocked him in. No mercy on a sudden man. We got a protest. If if any one of these fucktards got fucking beat up by a cop, we'd have to protest. But they don't have no mercy on your ass. When it when it comes to you, these motherfuckers, oh no, nah, he robbing too slow. Block his ass in. I'm gonna get out with an executor right here, bro. Judge <laughs> just execution. And if we got to do the time, we got to do the time. Fuck yeah. that shit. But we're going to kill back home, nigga. too. They we gonna kill nothing. <laughs> yeah, we're going to kill this nigga right here. They right, don't have be, home, be home soon. Real soon. They don't have yeah, This is the last no... damn time. He's going to leave a blinker on. Yeah, they don't have no mercy on you. And that's the crazy thing. That's why some people are so retarded. If any one of these dudes, if this dude got fucking shot by a cop, it'd be Fucking the country would be at a standstill. On behind the wheel as he was driving to work. So investigators say they got out and shot him. 10 o'clock in the morning, how are you that angry? Then from what the police said, like they barricaded the, his car. He couldn't go left, he couldn't go right. Richard's sister suspects that there is more to the story. He died a little while after cops got on scene. He was in his work vehicle. He can't drive fast. He can't take the red light. On Thursday, police arrested Spear and McKinley. Both faced charges of felony murder. Spears was also charged with aggravated assault. A breath of relief for Richard's family. It is very good news because I want to show them um, that these aggressors need to be off the streets. I would hate for this to happen to somebody else's family. The family has started an online fundraiser for Junior and his dad's final expenses. They're left with a lot of questions and a big hole in their hearts. Our family is just broken. We, we can't wrap our brain around it. In South Fulton, Rob Urienzo, Fox and 5 News. Just, just like that, scum of the community taking out the good people. Yeah. As usual. Yeah. Um, but he probably started that shit, too. That's what I'm saying. He fucked up with the wrong person. He should have known better. Yeah, he should have just kept going, right? Should have exactly. just kept driving. Yeah. 
Plymouth police are investigating a fatal shooting tonight. It happened at a home on Oakview Lane near 494 and Bass Lake Road. Megan Reistead talked with neighbors about what they say is typically a peaceful neighborhood. If you just heard the gunshot there. Matthew Hagland was getting ready to end his evening when violence and chaos claimed his peaceful night and a man's life. Yeah, it was a hectic night for sure. And I heard pop, pop, pop. Alexa Beller lives across the street. And we heard yelling and saw. Sons. <laughs> Sons. Who, who thought, who kind of, when y'all saw this, it saw this, it saw the neighborhood. Be honest. How many of y'all was like, all right, we finally got one. <laughs> we finally got one when it ain't us. Be honest, man. Be honest. Nah, I, I still thought it was Sons. You thought in this glider neighborhood. That's Plymouth, Plymouth, Massachusetts. No, I don't know what Plymouth this is. Let me see. I think this is Plymouth, Minnesota. This is Minnesota. Oh, Plymouth, okay. I don't Minnesota. know about that area. I know in Plymouth, Massachusetts, there's a lot of sun men over there, too. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. What, you in the Army or something? Well, no, I just know people from the East Coast. Okay, okay. From Boston area and stuff that moved out here from uh, when I was living in Los Angeles. Okay. Yeah, it was a hectic night for sure. And I heard pop, pop, pop. Alexa Beller lives across the street. And we heard yelling and saw a number of uh, kids, teenagers stream. That pause tells you everything. She had to, she knows her job, her livelihood, you know, her business um, <laughs> ventures, her <laughs> people she worked with, you know what I'm saying? Anybody she's the contracts with is all on the line she knows she got to tread lightly and we heard yelling and saw a number of uh kids teenagers streaming out of the house getting in their cars and driving really erratically trying to zoom out authorities say they tried to save the victim giving him first aid but he died at the scene. No one was living there, but we had heard it was on Verbo for rent. Carol Evan. Verbo. So that's like Airbnb. That's short-term rental. So that means, I'm telling you, man, listen. Listen, man. They are going to ruin the short-term rental game. Sons, they already ruined. In D.C., you can only do this for 90 days a year. They changed the law. 90 days a year. All these people that bought up all these houses in D.C. to Airbnb them uh, a couple years ago, now you can only Airbnb your house for 90 days out of the year. In D.C.? <laughs> yep, in Washington, D.C. Maybe, maybe one day I, they'll be fair and they'll allow open roads to everybody else. That's maybe. not this for the black up. Yeah, I mean, we already took, we've already done how they, how they, um, you've seen that wicked, how they discriminate. They say black people discriminate against black people on Airbnb. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, yeah, I, I, it's, it's, a, I think it's wrong. I, I, I don't understand why they would do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it's fucked up, man. And found an active listing for the home on Verbo. But by Sunday afternoon, the listing was taken down. No parties, no nothing like this that that uh, I've ever seen happen where, I mean, it's been very quiet. I guess this is the first time anything like this has happened. By Sunday, authorities continued to investigate the property. While questions remain, neighbors are certain their sense of safety has been shaken. Horrible to think a gun going off right across the street from where my daughter's sleeping. And then, yeah, just scary to know that that happened, you know, 100 yards from from where I was just, yeah, just sitting there on a Saturday night. And this guy, I promise you, I promise you, when he was asked about Scott Adams' remarks, he was like, oh my God, it's the worst thing that ever happened. The sky is falling. Jesus In this day and age. What is going on with America? How could he say that? I promise you, he's I promise you this guy thinks Scott Adams is a racist. You know, 100 yards from from where I was just, yeah, just sitting there on a Saturday night. In Plymouth. That happened just across the street. Megan Rystead, Care 11 News.
The man who died has not yet been identified. No word yet on whether anyone was. He's a son, man. Nobody's going to come forward, man. Nobody's going to say anything, man. Um, <laughs> God, Jesus Christ. We return to Stillwater tonight where neighbors are still shaken after a police shooting at an apartment complex yesterday. Charmaine Nero talked with neighbors about what they saw. Yeah, that's right, Morgan. It's a much different scene than it was last night. Much of the crime scene tape and the police presence has since left this area. But we did speak to neighbors who say they're still on edge after last night's shooting. It's very nice. I mean, very quiet, very relaxed. My family's lived out here for 20 years. It's calm outside this Stillwater apartment complex. About 24 hours after police responded to the sounds of gunfire. I heard some running up on the second floor and I just thought it was the kids upstairs running. But then right after that, I heard it was probably six to ten gunshots. Jeanette Shear has been living here for the past year. And it sounded really close. She immediately called 911 when she heard the shot. I noticed my patio door was open, so I quickly ran over, slammed that shut and locked it and then went back. I was literally hiding. And then there was probably 20 to 30 more shots. That I <sighs> she must have been terrified finding the door open. I tell you right now, I'd be terrified as a woman. <laughs> yeah, man. Definitely, man. You should be. If, if this is what's in your neighborhood. Well, can, can you elaborate on that? Do you mind, Judy? Like, what, what do you mean? Like, I mean, if you're just, as a woman, you're always thinking, like, the, I mean, personally, I'm always keeping my head on the swivel. That's just me. But as a woman, you're, it, you're raised growing up thinking, especially men, you're always raised thinking that all men are against you. And if you're hearing shots, if well, I'm putting, putting myself in a scenario, uh, in this scenario, I'm hearing shots and I'm hearing them on the roof. And then I see my patio door open. I'm going to think someone's inside my house. That's going to start freaking me out. And I'm, I'm a paranoid person, so I'm not going to like, I'm just saying from my personal experience, I'm, I know I'm going to start freaking out. Mm, interesting, man. I mean, I, I I always wondered that how women feel about that, like men claiming men identifying as women when like women, you go through the world. You're not just a woman like you don't just start. A, you're born a woman. You were a woman yeah. at one years old. You were a woman at 10. You were a woman at 15. Like, you've always been a woman. Yeah. Like I don't even use the bathroom at my gym anymore. That's good, man. The gyms, we did a story about the gym a couple weeks ago, man. Be careful at gyms, man. I made a 30 more shots that I heard after that, and then one last one. Stillwater police say they were first called out to the complex just before 2.30 p.m. Police say before they arrived, the unnamed suspect fired off several shots. I saw him coming out of the building. I saw him. Oh, what did he look like? Oh, what did he look like? Shooting. So I did see all of it. This all happened literally right in front of my patio. Like all the bullet markings were right from my bedroom window all the way to my daughter's bedroom window. Chief Brian Mueller told reporters the suspect shot at officers in the parking lot before officers returned fire. I saw a man um, laying right over here on what kind of man? The ground and they flipped him over and started doing chest compressions on him. Police say he was later pronounced dead at the hospital and say the suspect had several extended magazines to be used in a handgun. Very unsettling. Yo, he had a flag. Could he be a glider? Some men hate this flag, man. Some men think, I promise you, some men think that that flag is racist because there's a lot of gliders in my town that have that flag. And some men like be like, be like rolling their eyes and shit when they see that that shit. This is like a symbol of racism. If you're a chump, no, that, if that, you're a sun man. What do you mean? If you're that, a sun man, that's how they know the neighborhood's racist, Ak. Yeah, it's if you're a chump. It's in a yeah. handgun. Very unsettling or just even still water. Now people living here say they're still processing what happened 
and they're grateful more people weren't injured in the shooting. The police fast response. I feel more safe here now. Nah, it was a, it was a, it was a sudden man because she said the police fast response. I feel more safe here now. If it was just a glider, it would have been a one-off situation. If she feels like she needs the police around, that means it's a steady thing. So that's a sudden thing. Now, police say a gas line and two squad cars were hit by gunfire. We don't know a motive or the identity of the suspect, but we do know the BCA is still investigating. Wow. So, so right, let me let me ask you this, brother. If 